Hi, I'm Harrison Ford, and on behalf of the Federal Aviation Administration's Runway Safety Office, I encourage you to put safety first. As a licensed pilot, I have a healthy respect for the rules and regulations set forth in the aviation community. Take the time to become familiar with your airport and constantly stay alert to your surroundings. Whether you're piloting an aircraft or a person granted with driving privileges on the airport grounds, play it safe. Think before you act. Help put the brakes on runway incursions. Archer 611, hold your position, motorcycle on the taxiway. Wings tug, expedite. There's an aircraft landing on runway 28. Wings tug, you are told to hold short at 28. Clear for takeoff on runway 5, 1 Foxtrot Sierra. Well, hello, fellow pilots. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. Now, what we have just seen are examples of runway incursions. A runway incursion is the loss of separation or the creation of a collision hazard with an aircraft that's taking off or landing. And I can assure you this, they are a bad thing. In fact, they can run your whole doggone day. Well, nobody wants to be involved in a runway incursion. So why do they happen? Well, as with any other type of aviation incident, there can be a lot of causes and contributing factors. Some runway incursions are caused by vehicles, some by pedestrians, and some are caused by controller errors. But by far the majority are caused by pilots. Pilots can be fatigued, pressured by schedules, distracted, and confused. The net result is a temporary loss of situational awareness. But the good news is you can do something about it because the pilot always has a last chance to prevent a runway incursion incident from happening. So let's review airport signs and markings and talk about some habits and procedures you can use to manage the risk of a runway incursion. You can greatly reduce your odds of being where you're not supposed to be by studying the airport sketch in your IFR approach charts and briefing or self-briefing your taxi route before you start your taxi. It really helps to use the airport sketch to figure out in advance the headings you'll use for taxi and when you line up on the runway. That way, you can use your heading indicator as one more confirmation that you are indeed doing the right thing. If you do not have an approach chart for the airport, you can find sketches for some airports in the airport facility directory. Or you can get an airport sketch from a commercial flight guide or on the web at aopa.org. But you really load the odds in your favor if you actually remember what the markings and signs that you see around airports mean. Pavement that cannot be used by an aircraft is shown by double lines separating it from a taxiway or by yellow chevrons you find those adjacent to the end of a runway or yellow transverse stripes. You find those on the shoulders of taxiways. Hazardous areas such as construction areas are shown by barricades with alternate orange and white markings. Another place you're not supposed to be is on vehicle roadways. Vehicle roadway markings are shown by white lines. Dashed lines separate the lanes and solid lines show the edge of the roadway. Sometimes instead you'll see zippered lines like these to show the roadway edges. When a roadway might be confused with a taxiway, it will often be marked with a no entry sign. No entry signs are red with a white circle with a white horizontal bar inside the circle. 
Yet another area you're not supposed to be on is a closed runway or taxiway. These are marked with a large yellow X on each end of the pavement. At night, closed runways are sometimes marked with a lighted X sign. You cannot use an X'd off runway or taxiway for any purpose, including taxi. to go on an aircraft, let's talk about places you can go. And we all start off in a ramp area or an apron, so let's talk about those areas first. Now these areas are generally not controlled by ATC. They may be controlled by another entity such as the airport management, and when you call those folks, you call them ramp control. And ramp control is who you would call for a pushback clearance around the terminal. Now, areas that are controlled by ATC are called movement areas. Now, when you think of that term movement area from ATC's perspective, it kind of makes sense because controllers like to think of themselves as moving airplanes. So a movement area is where ATC moves airplanes. Now, movement areas include runways, most taxiways, and some ramp areas. The designation of movement areas is determined by an agreement between the airport operator and air traffic control. It makes sense that areas in which controllers don't control airplanes are called, are you ready for this? Non-movement areas. <laughs> the important thing to remember about non-movement areas is that you need to look out for other airplanes and vehicles that can be moving all over the place on their own without ATC supervision. Now to taxi from a non-movement area to a movement area, you need approval from a controller. Now the problem is, at most airports, there is no line separating movement areas from non-movement areas. So in that case, it just takes local knowledge to know when you're taxiing from a non-movement area into a movement area. Now it makes sense to hedge your bets, particularly if you're not positive that you are in a non-movement area. So talk to ATC anytime that you move an aircraft in that case. Now at some airports, the boundary between movement and non-movement areas is shown, and it's shown by two parallel lines. They're yellow and one is continuous or solid and the other line has dashes. Now, the continuous or solid line is on the non-movement side. And you can think of that continuous or solid line as a solid barrier that you cannot cross without ATC approval. On the other hand, if you're in the movement area, you will see a dash line on your side, and you can think of that dash line as having openings for you because you can taxi from a movement area to a non-movement area without ATC approval. Greenfield Ground, Learjet 226 Charlie Romeo, transient ramp, taxi for takeoff with India. So just 6 Charlie Romeo, runway 16, taxi via Foxtrot, hold short of runway 11 on Foxtrot. 6 Charlie Romeo, taxi to runway 16 via Foxtrot, hold short of runway 11. Okay, you can just get out the, the now when you get your instructions to taxi, the controller will normally direct you all the way to your departure runway, as she did here. And as you know, when you get your taxi instructions, you're required to read back the runway assignment and any hold short instructions, including the runway number of any runways you're to hold short of when you acknowledge them. Unless the controller says otherwise, you are authorized to cross any runways that intersect your route as you taxi to your assigned runway. Even though you are expected to cross any intersecting runways en route to your assigned runways. You are not allowed to taxi onto or cross any part of your assigned runway. After all, that's most likely a runway that is being used for takeoffs and landings. So, if the direct route to the approach end of your assigned runway would have you cross your assigned runway, as it does here, you cannot cross it without a specific instruction to do so. Now, if you're taxiing from a ramp area to a taxiway, 
you should see a dashed double yellow line separating the ramp area from that taxiway. When you're established on a taxiway, if the pavement is wider than the taxiway itself, you'll see a solid double yellow line separating the taxiway from pavement you are not supposed to taxi on. Of course, taxiway edge lights are blue, but sometimes you'll see blue reflectors or blue and yellow striped reflectors instead. We all know that taxiway center lines are marked with a single yellow stripe. This stripe continues across intersections with other taxiways and sometimes across runways. But taxiway stripes are interrupted by runway markings. If you have a habit of keeping the main wheel straddling the taxiway center line, you'll have maximum clearance on each side of the taxiway. Plus, in low visibility, you'll be less likely to lose track of your position. Now, at some airports, they light the taxiway center line with green lights or sometimes green reflectors. These lights are flush mounted in the pavement and you can taxi on them. You can think of green as go, meaning go ahead and taxi on the lights. You wouldn't want to try that with blue lights though, since they light the edges of taxiways. You'll also sometimes see green taxiway center line lights or reflectors in ramp areas. Now, taxiing around an airport can be confusing. In fact, some of us think that taxiing in after landing at a strange airport can be the hardest part of the trip. But say it's dark and the visibility is poor. Then things can be really confusing. And confusion is not good. So the FAA has mandated the use of standardized signs around an airport. But all the signs and markings in the world won't do you any good if you can't remember what they mean. So let's review what they all mean. First of all, all the signs we talk about can also be painted right on the pavement. But in either case, they mean exactly the same thing. Now, there is one saying that helps me sort out the meaning of airport signs more than anything else, and that saying is, Black Square, you're there. What that means is, if you see a sign with a black square with yellow letters and borders, it tells you what taxiway you are on. So in this case, Black Square, you're there, means you are on Taxiway Bravo. By the way, the convention is that taxiways are labeled with one or more letters. And when it's a stub taxiway, it also can have a number, such as in this case, Alpha 1 and Alpha 2. So, Black Square, you're there signs are called location signs. Now here is something else I use to help me keep the sign straight, and that is all direction signs have an arrow to point you to something. I know that sounds simple, but it actually helps me because if there's any question in my mind as to whether the sign is a location sign or a direction sign, it helps me to remember that all direction signs have an arrow. And direction signs, by the way, are yellow like this with black lettering, and you'll see them just before taxiway intersections. In this case, we're on Taxiway Charlie, we're coming up to Juliet, and the arrows point the direction for a turn to another taxiway. Here I'd turn right to get on Juliet or I could turn left to get on Juliet. Now, direction signs are often used in combination with location signs like this to give you a visual picture of what that intersection is going to look like. And so they're grouped so that they read from the left to the right showing the direction of the taxiways by the angle of the arrows. And so signs indicating a turn to the left will be, are you ready for this? On the left of the group, the location sign or black square, your there sign is in the middle of the group. And so here you can see that you are on taxiway Bravo. And of course, the signs indicating a turn to the right will be on the right side of the group. I think you have this thing figured out. Now, the whole sign group is usually on the left side of the taxiway. And that, cleverly enough, is so that the pilot in the left seat can see that group of signs very easily. 
Now, each direction sign is separated from the others by a black vertical bar, so you know which arrow belongs to which letter. So that'll help make it clearer, for instance, whether the sign is referring to two different taxiways or one taxiway that's labeled with a two-letter combination like Alpha Alpha here. So in this case, you'd have a tight turn or 90-degree turn to the left to get on taxiway Foxtrot and about a 45 degree turn to the left to get on golf, as you can see, and you'd turn about a 45 degree turn to the right to get on Alpha Alpha, and you'd have a 90 degree turn to the right to get on Alpha Bravo. And you can see that you're actually on, at this time, Taxiway Bravo. Now, sometimes when you get on the other side of the intersection, you'll see a location sign there just to let you know that you turned in the proper direction and you're on the taxiway you wanted. In this case, you are indeed on Taxiway Golf. Now, when a sign points the way to a destination, such as, well, a military facility or a passenger terminal or a ramp, then it's called, and are you ready for this? A destination sign. These are destination signs. Now, destination signs can use abbreviations, as you can see, or whole words, whatever is necessary to get the message across. Now, like direction signs, destination signs are yellow with black letters, and they always have an arrow. Now, destination signs can also be used to point the way to runways. And you'll see these signs very often at the entrance to a taxiway from an apron area. They show the runway number, and an arrow points the direction you take to get to that runway. Now, if the same route happens to lead to two runways, then the destination sign will show both runway numbers separated by a dot, and the dot should be read as AND. So this route right here will take you to runway 1028 and runway 523. On your way out to the runway, you will, at busy airports, occasionally see a single dashed line across a taxiway. This is a holding position for a crossing taxiway. You want to hold short of that line when ATC has asked you to hold short of the taxiway. This will help ensure clearance for aircraft passing on the crossing taxiway. Now, one thing you'll see at every airport is signs and pavement markings when you're about to cross a runway. Obviously, when it comes time to cross or taxi onto any runway, it's time to pay special attention. So let's review all the signs and markings that can alert you to the fact you are about to cross or taxi onto a runway. When you get to a runway from a taxiway, you'll see a group of four lines crossing the pavement, two solid lines and two dashed lines. The two solid lines will be facing you on the taxiway side of the group, and the two dashed lines will be on the runway side of the group. If you have not been instructed to cross or taxi onto the runway, you should stop short of the solid lines so that no part of your aircraft extends beyond the markings. You may actually want to stop a little short of that solid line so that the perception from either an aircraft on final approach or from the tower is that you are clearly behind the line. Even if you've been told, taxi up close but hold short, be ready for an immediate takeoff, Stopping a few feet behind the hold line will make sure there's no confusion on the part of other pilots or controllers. Think of the solid lines as a solid wall. When you get to a solid line, think, have I been instructed to enter onto this runway? And look, this is your last chance to prevent an error. If you have not, been authorized to cross or taxi onto the runway, the hold line indicates exactly where you should stop. If you're approaching the hold lines from the runway, the dashed lines will be facing towards you. 
you can think of the dashed lines as having openings for you to cross through. Because if you're approaching from that side, you can cross the hold lines without specific authorization. When you do exit the runway, you need to make sure your entire aircraft is clear of this line before you stop. As you know, you're not clear of the runway until your entire aircraft has crossed the hold line. Now, another thing that can alert you that you're about to taxi onto a runway is a holding position sign. In this case, you're on taxiway delta, that's this taxiway here, and you are intersecting runway one left. Holding position signs are red signs with white letters. By the way, any time you see a red sign at an airport, you should do a double take and think, stop. Red signs are reserved for situations that require special caution. Red holding position signs are placed at the side of the taxiway, usually on the left, before you get to a runway. These signs alert you to the presence of the runway, but you should use the hold line as your stopping point. The sign will tell you what runway you're aimed at. As we said, in this case, you're on taxiway delta, and you're intersecting runway one left at the end. Now, if you are not intersecting the runway at the end, the sign will show the numbers for each direction of the runway on the proper side of the sign. In this case, you're intersecting runway one left and runway one nine right. When you're intersecting more than one runway, holding position signs can have arrows like these. Now, sometimes at airports that have frequent low visibility operations, they'll install two side-by-side -side yellow flashing lights on each side of the taxiway. Has yet another clue that you're coming up on a runway. These are called wigwag lights or runway guard lights, and they're designed to help highlight your holding position. Along with these wigwag lights, You'll also sometimes see a row of flush-mounted, in-pavement yellow lights. Now, instead of yellow lights, you'll sometimes find a row of red lights embedded in the pavement at the hold position spot. This is called a stop bar. Never taxi across a stop bar when it's lighted. Along with the stop bar, there are elevated red lights on each side of the taxiway. The stop bar and the red lights are turned off when you can cross. This helps confirm your clearance. And sometimes, when the stop bar lights are turned off, green center line lights are turned on to guide you to the runway. Now, in addition to all the other precautions we've been talking about, you should make it a habit to check the final approach for traffic before you taxi onto any runway, even if you've been cleared for takeoff by the tower. And one other last check is to make sure that the runway is clear ahead of you before you start your takeoff roll. Because after all, it is just possible that the tower has made a mistake, and you have the last chance to save the day by being alert. Now, in spite of all the help that pilots get, occasionally pilots do accidentally taxi on the runways. Now, one clue that you have done this is the color of the pavement markings. All taxiway markings are yellow, and all runway markings are white. Now, if you are seeing white markings, that is a clue you are on a runway. If you're not supposed to be there, let ATC know and taxi off the runway immediately. Some runways, just the presence of an airplane near the approach end of the runway can interfere with the localizer and glide slope signals, or that airplane could intrude on the airspace for the approach. So in those cases, they have established what is called an ILS critical area. Now, when the weather is less than 800 foot ceiling and or two miles visibility, 
A taxiing aircraft is not allowed into the ILS critical area without ATC authorization. Now, the ILS critical area is shown on the pavement with markings right on the pavement that look kind of like a ladder or maybe a railroad track with some of the rungs missing here. So, when you are told to hold short of the ILS critical area, you should hold short of that line and to help you know where that line is, you will see the letters ILS. And those letters, ILS, are one more indication of just exactly where you're supposed to hold short of. Now sometimes, your route of taxi to a runway will take you across the approach area for another runway. In this case, your route of taxi to runway 36 takes you across the approach area for runway 32. And it may be necessary for you to hold short of that runway's approach area when another aircraft is landing. When that's the case, you'll see the standard double solid and double dash hold lines in two places. The hold position sign to keep the approach area for the runway clear will show the runway number, 32 in this case, and the abbreviation APCH for approach. This hold position is also used to protect aircraft departing from the opposite end of that same runway. So remember, you could be holding here for either an aircraft on approach or an aircraft departing from the other end. Now, in some cases, such as at an intersection of runways, there could be some uncertainty after you taxi onto a runway for takeoff as to just which runway you actually ended up on. In that case, you'll occasionally see what's known as a runway location sign. It's just like the normal black square you're there location sign used for taxiways, except it has a runway number in it instead of a taxiway letter. By the way, if you do not see a runway location sign, once you're lined up, remember to check your heading indicator against the runway direction to confirm you're on the correct runway. When you're on a runway after landing and need to clear the runway soon to make room for another airplane, you sometimes need all the help you can get to find the taxiway exit. Fortunately, a lot of help is available. You'll often see direction signs on the side of the runway before you get to a taxiway pointing out the taxiway exit. The signs are located on the side towards which you would turn to get off the runway. In this case, you'd be exiting the runway to the right, so the direction sign is on the right. At many airports, taxi stripes begin on the runway center line to lead you off to the taxiway. Also, along with a taxi stripe, you'll sometimes see green lights or reflectors on the runway to help lead you to a taxiway at night. By the way, the standard is changing to have alternating green and yellow lights from the runway center line to the hold line and then all green lights from there on. This is designed to help you know for sure when you are clear of the runway. Another thing that will occasionally help tell you when you're clear of the runway is a boundary location sign. These signs are usually on the back of the hold position signs facing the runway. They're yellow with black pictures of either the runway hold line or, as in this case, the ILS critical area line. You can use them to judge when you're clear. Then tell the tower what runway you just cleared and what taxiway you're holding on. And again, the taxiway should have a location sign to tell you where you are. In this case, you'd be clear of the runway on taxiway Alpha 1. Now let's talk a little bit about uncontrolled airports. You know, uncontrolled airports come in a tremendous variety from dirt strips like this to airports with airborne uh, firefighters like this. 
And although much of what we have been talking about has referred to controlled airports, uncontrolled airports probably offer the greatest risk of a collision on a runway. And it's because you have no help from ATC and you are on your own for collision avoidance. Plus, uncontrolled airports often don't have the same level of signage and markings as controlled airports. For instance, this guy is trying to tell us he's got a closed runway and he does it with a skull and a crossbones. Not what you would call conventional signage. Now, your best defenses at uncontrolled airports are to follow proper communications procedures and to always check both directions before you enter or cross any runway. And when you're departing, you should monitor and call on the common traffic advisory frequency before taxiing and before taxiing onto the runway for departure. Now, this will give any landing aircraft a heads up that you're going to be taking the runway soon. Now, when you're inbound, you should monitor that common traffic advisory frequency and call 10 miles out. Also call entering downwind, basin final, and leaving the runway. Now, at many busy VFR airports, there is a lot of student training traffic, so the common traffic advisory frequency can get very congested. So make your radio calls both precise and concise. You know, if you have ever been to Oshkosh or Sun and Fun during the conventions, you know how good they are about getting lots of airplanes on the ground. Well, that's because everyone is concentrating on what they're doing and following directions and being precise and concise and not cluttering up the frequency with unnecessary information. The key is being very efficient about giving other folks a heads up on your intentions. And at the same time, it's very important that you listen to other pilots on the frequency and develop a mental picture of the traffic around the airport. You know, as in the rest of life, many times listening is more important than talking. But you cannot rely on the radio alone because there's always the possibility that another aircraft may not be radio equipped or the pilot could be on the wrong frequency. So there is just no replacement for carefully looking both directions for traffic before you taxi on any runway. So check that runway before you taxi on it and finally at any airport if you notice that the signage and markings just aren't what they should be, do yourself and other pilots a favor. Encourage the airport operator to provide clear runway hold position markings and signs on all taxiway and runway intersections, and the incident you prevent just might be your own. Well, we've just had a good review of airport signs and markings. But we all know that just understanding the signs and markings around airports is not in itself enough to prevent a runway incursion. After all, signs and markings may be obscured by snow or ice or damaged and not working during construction. The key is to follow good procedures. Study the airport sketch before you taxi. And if you have any confusion at all, ask for help. And remember to maintain cockpit discipline and a sterile cockpit when you're moving on the ground. Now, if you're flying a general aviation aircraft, brief your passengers about cockpit discipline in advance and then remind folks when they slip. And always be especially careful when you cross runways. Of course, before you taxi onto any runway, it's always a good habit to check for traffic landing or taking off from either direction as well as for any ground vehicles or pedestrians that aren't where they should be. Plus, it helps to vocalize. The runway is clear, and I am authorized to cross it or taxi onto it. You know, runway collisions will always be a risk, as long as there's more than one aircraft and we're using runways. But the key is we must all take care to recognize and manage that risk. And making sure you're up to date on understanding airport signs and markings and following good procedures will go a long way towards ensuring that you won't meet new friends unexpectedly while you're on a runway. <laughs> <laughs>